I'm going to do as fast as possible walkthrough on how to install a node application in Windows as a system service with the correct firewall settings um, that because it's a system service starts as soon as the program is installed and anytime the computer reboots so first I'll just show you what my program is super quick um, it's a connect module or a, a connect app I'm just using the favicon module, the static module, and then a function called git count. This git count function creates a directory, reads from a file that just has a single byte in it that is a number, converts that number, then writes out the file after incrementing it, does an HTTP request to yahoo.com slash robots.txt, and then responds including an error if there was one. Now, the reason for this is we want to make sure that we have permissions to create a folder, we have permissions to write to a file, we have permissions to get through the firewall. So we'll know that the firewall inbound rules are working by the fact that we can get to this app via web browser. We know that the outbound firewall rule is working because we can get out to Yahoo and we know that the app has been installed with the correct permissions because we can create files and folders. Okay. So first I'm going to take you over to Inno Setup, and you just click on the downloads link. Stable releases. This is what I've been using right here 5.5.3 Unicode. Um, so you can download that. I've already got it downloaded. Also, in SSM, the non sucking service manager. Um, again, click straight to downloads, and it looks like the site is down. I would assume that it'll go back up. However, I do want to note back here on my GitHub that I included the exact versions of everything I used under this Winstaller folder right here, just in case something becomes unavailable or a different version doesn't work. So uh, I include the Inno setup node and NSSM and then my installer script. So like I said, I've already installed Inno Setup. NSSM is not something that we install to the system uh, for creating the package. It's just something we include in the package to be able to create a system service. So what will get installed on the user's computer will be Node. I don't do a conditional check to see whether or not they have it. If you figure out how to do that and you want to um, post back with instructions, I would love that. I'll update my post and get it included. Um, it will include both versions of NSSM. Um, I don't currently do a check. The 64-bit version works for me, so that's what I'm using, but you can modify the script. And then um, doesn't install the script, doesn't install NS setup, does install everything in the Hello Node folder. So what we're gonna do to get this is click on the zip download right here. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the downloads folder. So I just open up Explorer here, click on downloads. I'm going to right click, extract all, and then I'm going to extract it directly to the downloads folder. Okay. And now under the Winstaller folder is where I have Inno setup that you can install from that or the website, whichever you like. But I'm going to go ahead and show you just from the the Inno Setup compiler here what I did to start off with, but but then I'll show you my actual script and what the changes were. So I'm going to create a script with the wizard. That's how I started. I called the program Hello Node. I'm just going to leave this stuff here because we're not even going to use this. Uh, I found there's problems installing to the programs files folder. What I had to do was put it in C colon backslash hello node. So I'm just calling this hello program to fit with the example program thing we got going on. Do not allow the user to change the application folder because we're using a custom folder. Uh, and then we don't want to allow the user to start the application because they don't start it manually. This would give the little checkbox at the end that would be default checked and when they click finish would open. It does not have a main executable. The main executable will be node. And the files that I would need to add 
Let me go to downloads here. Um, I would want in SSM and Node, I would want those files to be included. And then the folder that I would want to be included would be my actual app with all of its stuff. Um, so I think I might just go individually and select these. No, I'll just select that whole thing. Yes, I want to recursively add it. Go to next. Don't want to allow the user to change anything. Um, I'm not going to put a license file. You can, it's just a TXT file. It's just something that they have to click. I agree. Same thing with the information before and information after. It's just one of those parts in the next next. I figure, why bother? Um, it's just more clicks for the user. The license file might make sense for you, but the before and after, they, when they open the app, you can just show them the first time, whatever. Okay, and then I like to call mine something better than setup, so I'm just going to change the name to my program installer. Um, you can create an icon file if you just Google convert PNG to ICO online. Um, this first link is what I used. So I just uploaded a PNG and made an icon. Um, probably don't want a password. And then I just put the output folder as the desktop. And yeah, I do want to use compiler directives. Those are nice. Okay. And no, I don't want to compile this new script right now. But this is what you get by default. So this would just install the files themselves onto the system. So these are the compiler directives. You just get pound defines that you get to use. And it's really simple. There's just a setup, a languages, and a files. And then by default, it's not the hello node folder that's copied, but rather the contents as denoted here by the star. And then the flag on this that says recurse subders create all subders meaning even empty ones I don't know what the ignore version is all about but this is the the thing that it hands you this is only kind of useful um, this would be useful if it were an app that somebody were going to open up and there were a main installer or a, a main executable and, and for that, I think that you would need to use, um, I think NPM can create Windows executables as dot .bat files, um, but that's not really what I'm covering here, so I'll skip that. Let me go back. So I've got this hello node.iss. I'm gonna open this and then just kind of show a few of the differences. For convenience, I've created a few more pound defines so I created my app short name and my app LC short name and uh, LC for lowercase and the reason I did that is just because I, the only thing I can see why I wasn't able to install in program files was perhaps because of the space there so when I did my install to C colon backslash um, I figured it'd be best just to remove the space in the name also for system services and stuff like that where I didn't want to have to be quoting it again um, for, for some stuff I, I use the short name so uh, I can see oh I actually gave you the wrong instruction over here you just tell it to put it in sequel and backslash when you go through the wizard anyway let me go down uh, file section pretty simple it's just that node MSI and then the NSSM 32 and 64 bit versions and then um, the hello node, all the stuff inside of it. Then the run section is where it gets interesting because if I were to just create it without adding this extra run section that I found some documentation for online, then I would just have installed the files but not 
um, a service and also I have to install node so even if I were just doing this as something that I open up occasionally and not as a system service I still would need node installed and for convenience I just have the MSI install right here then I also add firewall rules the firewall rules apply to node.exe because that is what is actually running so I'm just very liberal with the firewall rules um, I allow everything in and everything out to node.exe Fire, the firewall rules have to apply to a program not just generally and then the other firewall rules that I added aren't actually being used right now because I wasn't able to get node windows the, the node windows module to work which also has a way of creating services but if I figure out how to get that working in the future, this is the firewall rule that I would need. Um, just the it, node windows, when you start a service with that module, creates a daemon folder and then creates an executable in it. Um, so the, the firewall rule would need to apply to it, I think. And then here, adding the system service, I'm using NSSM. Again, I, I did create the, with the node windows module something that would install a service as well but it just wasn't consistent in the behavior uh, I was able to get it working but I don't know exactly how I did it and I can't repeat it so that's why I'm not um, using that right now but in the future if I get that figured out or the bug gets worked out that might be something to use and then the last section is the uninstall which is just stopping the service removing the service removing the firewall rules, removing node, and then removing any leftover files that are in the directory, um, which may not be something that you would want because maybe you'd want them to be able to reinstall it again and still have the configuration files or whatever there. So you just comment that out. Uh, the other thing that would need to change for your setup is all of these directories have my username in them local age 86 so you just want to do a find replace and then look for all occurrences of cool age 86 and then replace it with whatever your username is and then do a replace all on that and I think that's all you need to know in order to get it working for you so I'm going to close out of this um, unsaved file that we're not actually using no I don't want to save the changes and I'm going to build this and it's going to put it out to the desktop. Now I could just click on that the green arrow button here and it would both build and run it at the same time. But I just want to show you um, that if I run this installer that it created, uh, you know, this is the file that I could put up on my website and it will in fact work as expected um, and again this is the exact same thing if for testing I just hit the green button it's gonna create that and it's gonna run it for me I just wanted to show what it's like in production so to speak okay so that's actually the Windows and or the the Node.js installer that's running right now and if you figure out how to do anything um, like conditionally figure out if a, a suitable version of node is installed or any tips that you can you can give me as feedback if you figure out how to get things installed into the program files folder like what the hang up is there or how to use the node windows module to create services any of that kind of stuff I would love feedback on um, especially on the the actual blog article that that has the uh, written instructions not so much the YouTube video um, Although if you put it there, I'll just copy it over to the blog as well. Anyway, so now I'm going to go to localhost 5566 because that's the default port I specified. And we can see the index.html comes up. The jQuery is able to retrieve that number from slash count. So I know that the folder, the var folder was created. If I let me just go back here, I don't know how you get to the C colon in the new windows. I guess Windows 7 isn't new anymore, but anyway, so I just did it that way. And then I open up this, 
this var folder did not exist before. That's not something that it shipped with. This count file, same thing, did not exist. Um, I call it count.db, and it just stores one byte, which is the number, or pick, well, ASCII number, so it could potentially be more bytes when it gets up. But every time that number appears, I know that my firewall rules are working. First of all, my inbound rules are working because I'm able to access the app. I know that my outbound rules are working because um, I would, well actually let me just double check to make sure the result I'm getting back doesn't have an error in it because it may actually return the number whether or not there's an error, I don't, I don't recall. So let me just refresh this again, okay, count, error is null, has internet is true. So yeah, so I know that it's getting out to yahoo.com, so the outbound firewall rule is working, and then this started right after the installation, so I know that the system service is installed, and I know that the system service can run, because that is what I specified uh, right here was first it would install the system service and then it would use net.exe to start the system service. So everything's working um, as expected with a couple of caveats and again everything that you need to be able to do this I have included in, let me go back to downloads here, I've included in my repository just in case maybe a different version doesn't work you've got a starting point where you know that this combination right here if all you do is open up that file and then do a find replace on um, cool aj86 for whatever your username is and you run this you should be able to get um, this as a working starting point and then be able to move from there to build it into be whatever installation you want so i hope that's helpful for you and I really hope that you come back to me with comments on how to make improvements, how to do this better. Um, Windows is a beast. It's definitely the most difficult of, of the operating systems to get this kind of installation working and running. There's far more caveats here than with OS X or with Linux. So any help in this area would be greatly appreciated. If this was useful for you, please go ahead and give that little thumbs up button a nice click. Also, you'll see the notes are in the comments section down below. You can either at the end of the article or right up at the top. Give it a like, tweet, plus one, whatever. Thanks.